Hey sketchy friends, um, in this video I want to talk to you about these Rembrandt aquarelle pencils uh, made by a German company called Lyra. This is the set of 12. I'm on a bit of a budget at the moment so um, that's why I'm doing sets of 12 pencils rather than any more but I think from the set of 12 we can get the gist of what the pencils are like and how they perform. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to talk to you about the different colours and show you a bit of a demo sketch. Um, let's get into it. Hey guys, so um, I was just in the art shop um, and lucky enough to have been there during the Black Friday sale, which I genuinely didn't know anything about. Um, and they had 40% of absolutely everything in the store. so. Um, I thought I would buy some more watercolour pencils because I only have the Derwent Inktense pencils at the moment, um, the 12 set. Uh, let me just find those for you. So um, those are the ones I have at the moment and I've really been enjoying them and I've never really liked watercolour pencils. So if you've watched any of my other videos, um, there's a couple where I use these and I'm just like... Yeah, I'm pleasantly surprised. I'm really enjoying using them and I know they are a bit different to normal watercolour pencils because they've got this kind of ink tense, ink kind of pigment to them so they are super vibrant. So I thought let's try some some normal watercolour pencils um, and I think these are supposed to be really good um, from what I've seen elsewhere. Um, they're, they're Lyra, German company. Um, the Rembrandt aquarel pencils. So I think the, well, not I think, these are the artist grade pencils, not their student ones. So I think it's always worth going for the artist grade, to be honest, because I just don't think, unless, you know, you're a young art student who really does just want to see what something's like. Obviously, it's nice that things are cheaper, but I just think you get what you pay for and especially if you want to do anything serious with these you know um I'd much rather my my the reason i don't like watercolor pencils is because i've tried them before student ones and they were just i just didn't see the point in them i just thought they were rubbish really so um anyway um so i've got this slip of paper obviously showing me they've been tested or something um they come in this really nice metal tin I like that, it's pretty cool, good for travelling. Um, and yeah, they look pretty pretty unassuming. So I've got 12 different colours in there. Uh, white, lemon yellow, orange, uh, pale geranium lake, which is red. Uh, deep carmine, light blue, Prussian blue, permanent green. Uh, yellow, still the green. That one isn't in English I don't think, but I think it's a yellow green. Uh, Van Dyke brown, Venetian red and black. So I'm just going to do my usual um, colour chart with these and let's see how they come out. Uh, I am using white paper here and I do have a white watercolour pencil um, so I might do the same chart in my tone sketchbook as well and just show you guys the difference. I'll put it into time lapse obviously. Um, but yeah that's it's kind of annoying because I just bought, I specifically bought a white watercolour pencil. Uh, which I never seem to have lost. Oh no, here it is. Um, just separately bought a white Derwent watercolour pencil because they didn't have it in the intense range and I wasn't, I didn't do any wonders for me to be honest. So I think I was hoping it would be like kind of a little bit opaque and it's not really. Um, but maybe again it's just my lack of knowledge in knowing what to do with it so anyway let's see i'll do the chart and then we can look at the colors so here i am just making a color chart um i do usually use a ruler for this but i think it was a particularly hot day and i just really couldn't be bothered so um i do apologize for my wonky squares but it's me who's got to live with it in my sketchbook so that's fine um I just thought I'd do it by eye, but as you can see, that did not come out neatly. So um, yeah, I'm just kind of colouring in these squares um, the best I can. I sometimes find it a bit awkward to keep get the angle of the colouring 
consistent because I've literally got my camera to the right of my arm and I'm trying to keep the sketchbook in the same direction so sometimes I do find this a bit tricky um, uh, but anyway um, so yeah this set comes um, with 12 colors um, from white through to black obviously the white didn't really show up too much on my sketchbook um, which is fine. The only thing I'm confused about in this set is the pale geranium lake and the dark carmine, the two kind of pinky reds, they're really similar to each other so I was kind of a bit surprised that they would both be included in a set of 12. Um, but that's my that's my only real comment. I did find them quite bright particularly on the toned paper so you can see the white came out quite nicely on the toned paper. This is the Hahnemuller watercolour tone sketchbook um, and you can see it's like it's definitely brighter than the white in the Mungyo watercolour pan set um, that I have a video on by the way I reviewed um, just because they're super cheap sets so I thought I'd see how they did and then this is the white that I bought separately from the just straight up Derwent watercolour pencils the other day because I wanted a white to try out on the sketchbook um, and I think the Lyra white is so much better than either of those options so I'm quite happy with that So I decided that um, I would do a demo sketch with these pencils. Um, it's another doorway, so if you watch my other uh, video about watercolour pencils in general, I actually used the Derwent Ink Tents, and at that stage I didn't really grasp the concept that the Ink Tents pencils are not your traditional watercolour pencils, really. I knew they were just vibrant, but I think they've actually got like a different kind of pigment in them. Anyway. I did, a, I did a demo sketch there of a doorway and kind of unintentionally I am again doing a doorway with these watercolour pencils so I guess that's just a running theme now so anytime I review watercolour pencils that's what I'm going to do now. Um, so I found this really cool picture of a doorway in Havana in Cuba um, which I've had on my Pinterest board for ages to kind of have a go at sketch uh, to sketch and um, I don't know, I've always sort of been put off with all the flaky paint and everything. I was like, oh, it'd be great if I could nail that kind of vibe, but I'm not sure if I can get it to look quite right yet. Um, but anyway, it, I decided that that was the doorway I was going to do now. I obviously felt ready for it. Um, by the way, guys, if you want to check out my Pinterest board, um, I just sort of gather interesting pictures there for sketching reference, just for sketching practice, and I find it really useful when um, I don't know what to draw. I just go to that board and just sort of flick through the photos I've collected there and then it kind of it kind of helps you know um, not take away too much from your drawing time by having to decide what to do so I think it's quite helpful to to do that so um, yeah I'd highly recommend sort of starting your own board really and sort of collecting interesting pictures that you think you might like to draw um, but yeah if you want to go and check mine out you're welcome to use the pictures I've got there um, and you can um, you can follow that board and, and all those kind of things. I've got loads of other boards as well, so you can just follow my account in general. It's Urban Sketching World. I'll put the link below. Um, but yeah, I've got boards on urban sketching, watercolour art, sketchbook artists, all kinds of stuff. So it's just, just over the years, you know, since probably about 2012, I've just sort of, you know, been collecting interesting, cool stuff. I think there's a lettering board as well as all sorts. So yeah, go check it out. It might might help you out. Um, so here we are, I'm using the geranium, pale geranium lake pencil here. Um, I always find it's a bit of a learning curve picking up watercolour pencils for the first time again because it's been a little while and also I've been using the Derwent ink tents which again are a tiny bit different. Um, but yeah, I'm sort of getting to grips with them again. You can see the vibrancy of these just standard watercolour pencils is still really nice. Um, and they're they're rated as as high kind of light fastness, so you know they are professional grade um, watercolor pencils. I'm trying to think how much I, the full price they were because I got them in the Black Friday sale, as I mentioned. Um, I think they're about fifteen pounds, so I guess that's like eighteen dollars, twenty US dollars, something like that. So that's a pretty good price. Um, and then I was sort of, you know, playing around with them, layering them over one another, just sort of seeing how it goes. Um, the sketchbook I'm using here is the Hanamula, the standard watercolour sketchbook. Um, and yeah, I felt like things didn't get too muddy when I was laying country, um, 
countries? Where did that come from? Colors uh, over the top of one another. And then here I'm trying out another technique that you can do with watercolour pencils, which is to take the pigment directly from the pencil with the brush. Um, and this means you don't sort of get the pencil strokes or anything, and you can actually just get like a nice lay down of like watercolour pigment. Um, so I, I found that quite nice actually, and I felt the colour still came out really nice and vibrantly, um, which was really cool. Um, but I also, you know, in places, especially when you're like doing doors or um kind of walls and stuff like that like I quite like the pencil strokes showing through but obviously that's not um super great for every part of your sketch especially if you want something quite smooth um so yeah I'm just kind of playing around just trying to like layer them together and um you know just sort of see how they react I'm been quite enjoying them so far um, but I think, you know, a lot of it is like my own kind of learning curve on how to use them as well. I think the key is, um, again, even uh, the same sort of thing with watercolour paints is really just to not be afraid to just kind of carry on layering them up and really trying to get some nice depth and um, things in there. So I kind of wasn't happy with um, the door on the right, the pink door yet, but I knew, you know, over time I was going to come back to it. And then here I'm using another technique where you take the uh, paint from the pencil and then you mix it in the actual palette. So I took like a kind of a green, the, one of the green colors and one of the blues um, to make this kind of interesting teal sort of color that the wall was. Um, and it actually came out really well. I was actually really happy with um, how much uh, paint I could get just from take, you know, just sort of stroking the pencil a few times really um, so yeah I was uh, quite happy that it actually came out came out well and that I got this kind of nice color that I wanted to I did read somewhere else I forget where it was but someone was saying it is quite hard to mix colors from the pencils all the time you know and get the same color it's like this set you know if I tried to mix this teal again it wouldn't be quite the same um, but, you know, I think that's kind of nitpicking, I suppose, because I guess that would be the same issue if you were using watercolour paints, really. Um, it could be tricky to get the exact same mixture again, and that's why you always should make mix enough colour for what you need to cover, you know, which I'm really bad at, by the way. Um, but, yeah, so I don't know if that's actually valid just for watercolour pencils, really. But yeah, so now I'm starting to add some shadows, which is actually starting to really bring this um, to life. And I wasn't really sure how to do it. Um, so I was actually taking some um, black from the black pencil, which I know is generally a big no-no in watercolours. But I was like, I don't know if I can get that sort of deep shade pigment or colour that I need from like any of the other pencils I had. You know, I was just literally using these 12 pencils. So... I did go in with black. I'm going to hold my hands up, guys, and uh, that definitely happened. So, um, you know, uh, I'm not a traditional watercolour painter, so I also feel like you can do what you want in art. So screw the rules. It's all good. So, yeah, now I'm just trying to darken up some panels on this door. I'm still not crazy happy about that pink door. It's not turning out quite how I wanted. However, I'm quite happy with the left side of the painting where, or the sketch where the staircase is going up like that. And then also having a go at just kind of making these door frames look a bit deteriorated and a bit well worn and stuff and I was actually really happy with how that came out I was just kind of scribbling like areas of black and brown and whatnot and kind of just trying to blend them together and make it look old you know and deteriorated and I was quite happy um for some reason I felt like I wanted to splash a bit of white gouache on here um I don't know why but I usually just follow my gut and just go with these things and actually in the finished product it didn't really um come out so much anyway but it just adds a bit of interest, a bit of texture, I suppose. Um, so that was my one cheat. I was allowed white gouache. I feel like I'm allowed to use white gouache in whatever I do, so that's fine. Um, I'm a bit addicted to white gouache, so I do have a bit of a problem. So, uh, yeah, but that's fine. Um, so, yeah, just blending together some pinks and some blues on the street there. Um, and doing my favourite bit of splattering some paint around. I always think that helps to create a bit of interest as well and it's fun
and then yeah just trying to get a bit of a wood a bit more of a wood grain effect in the in the doors um, in the door on the right which is the upshot of pencils you know being able to get those kind of textures um, so that's pretty much it for this one um, guys um, I was pretty happy with how the illustration turned out um, for someone who doesn't really use watercolor pencils um, this was all a bit of a, a test really but I was quite happy to see that these watercolor pencils were um, you know just as vibrant or bright as you know the, the ink tents I really didn't know how it was going to work out because again I've had bad experiences in the past with watercolor pencils because they were student grade and they just didn't show up so I didn't really see the point in them do go and check out urbansketchingworld.com as you can see I've got a post there about urban sketching with watercolor pencils which is kind of filled with everything I've learned as well as different resources that you can find and examples um, and all that kind of stuff and I've got a multitude of posts on various other things there's one there about gouache um, there's one there about cool urban sketching books all kinds of things so um, please do check, check it out urbansketchingworld.com and then also um, I do have an ebook available as well so if you like my sketches and you like my work which you can check out on Instagram by the way it's at looking out to see um, with an underscore at the end and C is spelled S-E-E -E, as in look with your eyes C uh, not the water so at looking out to see under, uh, with an underscore is in the description below um, to check out some more of my work. But I do have this ebook which collects together all of my um, ink and watercolour sketches. There's over 130 of them in there and it's from the last three years of my travels. Um, I've been to amazing countries such as Iran, Somalia, South Sudan, um, the UK, Australia, Ireland, Spain, like all kinds of different countries. Um, so 15 different countries over four continents, um, along with just a few little notes about what you're looking at or a few little stories, that kind of thing. Um, so you can check that out on Gumroad. Um, the link is below. Um, and if you use the discount code USKWORLD, you get 20% off. And it's not even Black Friday anymore, but I'm still giving you 20% off. So please do check that out, guys. Um, thanks very much for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one.